Hey guys, um, we're back to. Um, sorry for the break, but let's see how we could cover the content of this syllabus. Um, so, within the next few weeks, we'll be looking at um, the concluding aspect of chapter four, and also we'll be looking at chapter nine. Now, for this aspect, we'll be looking at water and its environment. So, we'll look at water supply and water usage. So, water supply. Now, um, these are majorly the major source of fresh water that is used by humans for human survival. Now, quickly, the first source of fresh water are groundwater aquifers. Now, which are water stored in porous rocks under the ground. Um, so, uh, when you have alternating layers of permeable and impermeable rocks trapped uh, we trap the water in the permeable rock now so folded layers of rocks so water accumulate the most in the down fold so if you have a layers of rocks uh, as it is on this diagram and uh, you have layers that are permeable and uh, impermeable layers so permeable layers are layers that allow water to pass through them the impermeable layers are layers that don't allow water to pass through them so what will happen is if you have a permeable layer here and beneath it you have an impermeable layer following it so what will happen is as the water rain falls it accolades through then the water will be able to pass through the permeable layer but unable to pass through the impermeable layer mm -hmm. then we said um, folded layers when there are folded layers then and uh, possibly because of compression of force uh, from two edges then the layer become folded just like what you have here now if it is folded, you find that at the, aid, the downfall area here, we now have high concentration of rock uh, of water. Right? These are um, impermeable layers here. So what will happen? You now have a store of water beneath the earth surface. Now this store of water is referred to as the groundwater aquifer. Um, so permeable rocks outcropping on the surface receive new supplies of water. So new supplies keep coming in, percolate and stored. Now, water is stored in the limestone and sandstone porous rock below the water table. So, mechanical pumps or human labor are usually used to raise the water to the surface. That's the um, first source of water. The second source of water is wells, which are hole, uh, a hole that is bored or dug into rocks to reach the water stored in them. Then we also have surface water, which are waters in lakes rivers and swamps they are also fresh water they are also a source of water um, so on these lakes rivers and dams you can actually build a dam uh, a swamp sorry you can actually build a dam or a reservoir now a reservoir is an artificial lake used as a source of water supply now it's usually created behind a dam or by the side of a river um, bank so if it's usually built strictly to supply water now a service reservoir is a reservoir where portable water is usually stored then glaciers the glaciers are a composite of different snow over the years and different snowfall which accum accumulate over the years in order to now have a store of fresh water now desalinization and uh, desalination is the removal of salt from seawater. Now, seawater is not portable for drinking because it has high amount of salt content in it. Now, some um, developed economy have devised means of purifying seawater. And the process in which salt is removed from seawater is referred to as desalinization. And there are two ways in which it is done. The first uh, uh, is distillation. So we're going to look at how distillation works, and the second is reverse osmosis. Now, those are the two ways in which you remove the salt content from water. Now, uh, water is boiled and released as vapor, leaving salt behind. Now, the vapor is then condensed as a liquid water and can be used, which is 10 to 30% efficient and is uh, and uses a lot of energy. Now, provision of energy and salt water uh, is a source of pollution. So, um, 
I mean, let's see this quick animation here about it. So you see, uh, first you have this is the brine, a source of salt water, the container. Then you you heat it. When you heat it, it reaches the water reaches boiling point, and the water will begin to evaporate. Once the water evaporates, it will now pass through this condenser, and the condenser will now help to condense the water vapor, which will now eventually uh, be stored in this container here. So the water that will be stored here will be good and uh, will lack salt content, purify for drinking, while uh, the salt will be left behind in the solution. That's just it. Then the second part is reverse osmosis. Now reverse osmosis uh, has to do with pumping water at high pressure through a fine membrane. Remember, osmosis has to do with the movement of water from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration uh, down the concentration gradient through a permeable, semi-permeable membrane. Now, this method of water, the, the reverse of that process is reverse osmosis. So the reverse will be the pumping of water from a region of low water potential to a region of high water potential through a semi-permeable membrane. Now, so um, in that case, you need pressure um, that will be used to push the water from the region where the water has a very low concentration to a region where it has a high concentration. Because in this case now, you are moving against uh, the concentration gradient, so you need energy to be applied to it. Uh, so you find that at 30 to 50% efficient and require lesser energy than distillation, because in distillation you have to burn, use a, a lot of heat to make sure to, uh, to evaporate the water, to have a high quantity that will be needed survival now let's look at this also you see in osmosis normal osmosis this is a semi-permeable membrane then this is high water potential because there is no salt content here so the amount of water here is high why the amount of water here is low because uh, there is salt in it so normally water is supposed to move from here uh, that has high water potential to here that has a low water potential. So it's supposed to move in this direction. This is the normal osmosis occurring uh, from region of high water to region of, so that there will be a balance in the concentration of water between the uh, two sides of uh, uh, the molecules. Now, but in reverse osmosis, the opposite is the case. Now you apply pressure on the area that have a low water potential so it will now use force to push the water through the semi-permeable membrane to a region that have high water potential, uh, leaving the salt content behind because the salt cannot pass through this semi-permeable membrane. That's it. Now, um, before I look at water usage, there are other sources of water supply, which can be rainwater harvesting when you put your um, container outside and during rainfall to make sure that the amount of water that is coming in will enter that container that can also be used. Um, so that's another source of source uh, water supply. Uh, boreholes are another source of water supply. So you can actually remember those two and add it to this content. Now, water usage. There are three major ways in which water is used, fresh water is used. One is used for domestic use. Uh, so in the case of domestic use, you find that, that at home for drinking and cooking, washing and flushing the toilet, washing clothes for your gardens, for washing cars and lost in leaks uh, or pipes at home that um, got broken and water will be lost in the process. Now, those are domestic usage. Then industrial use of water. Uh, water is used in factories for cooling, also for mixing and making products such as dyes and pens. Uh, water is used in bottling and canning in foods and drink industry. And also we use water for power generation, that's hydroelectric power. So you can watch my video on uh, uh, electricity generation to help you in that aspect. Now, agricultural use. Water is also used for agricultural process. Um, so mainly for irrigation, um, plants need water for transporting minerals, uh, for photosynthesis, and also for prevention of wilting. So it will not uh, lose water from itself. Um, vacuole and cytoplasm and die in the process. So it needs constant supply of water. And also uh, for agricultural use, water is needed for domestic animals. So animals that have been rare also need water for 
their survival. So um, this is it. We'll, we're going to meet in the next aspect of this um, video where we'll now look at other um, parts of it. So please, you can always subscribe.